When it comes to color grading, where you put your LUTs can make a big, big difference. Let's go take a look and make sure you're putting yours in the right place. There's no doubt that if you've been out there shooting, you've discovered very, very early on that color grading comes down to be almost as important as your camera and the lenses itself. And what I wanna do today is talk about LUTs and how they can make a big difference in where you put them in your color grading process. It's something that I think a lot of you don't think about, but it's something that can make a big difference and takes away or gives a lot of flexibility to you in the color grade. So let's jump over in Adobe Premiere and take a look at it. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere in Lumetri, and this is where you can really see where these things make a big difference. Now, one important thing to understand about color grading is color grading works from top down. So where you do a color grade will end up affecting everything underneath it, not above it, if that makes sense. So where you place your LUTs are very important. If you don't know what LUTs are, LUTs essentially are pre-packaged color correction devices that can get your camera, especially if you're working in log footage, up to a more broadcast standard. A 709 LUT is a very, very common LUT. This is great because if you're working in LUTs, it allows you to very, very quickly get your footage looking really, really close to normal very, very fast. So if you haven't used LUTs in the past, I highly recommend it. So what I wanna do today is take a look at this LUT right here. Now, this is an older shot that I took, but as you can see, I shot this one actually on a Panasonic GH5, and you can see it's a classic V-log look. This is a log look, it's in V-log. We need to go ahead and add a LUT. Now, a lot of you will probably do this. You will come up here, here in the basic correction tab of Lumetri, and you will go ahead and put your input LUT right there, right at the top of your source. And what I've done here, just so you know, is I've duplicated this clip twice so you can kind of see what we are playing with. Now, if I come up here, I've already got a LUT that I'm gonna put in there. I have uh, a Venom LUT that I really love for my V-Log, and as you can see, boom. Instantly, you put the LUT on there, and right away, you can see just that one click of a button, what it does. The other good thing about this is you can look here at my scopes, and you can see just how it basically takes my waveform and brings back the contrast, it adds the color, and all that stuff. However, there is an issue here. Because now I have put this LUT at the very top of my color grading, it is going to be affecting everything under here. And I might not want that, and I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna take this clip, I'm going to hide it, and I'm gonna come back to this second clip, and instead of coming up here to the basic correction tab, I'm going to come to creative. And if you look right here, there is another look that I can do here. So I'm gonna basically go ahead and put my LUT in the creative tab instead of the basic correction tab. So I'm gonna do that, we'll come here, I'll put the exact same LUT, and boom, you have the same LUT. Now, as you can see when I flicker on this on and off, the LUTs are exactly the same. You see no difference in the order of the LUT at this stage of the game. What happens is when I begin wanting to change it and refine my image even more. And if you look here, you can see that this is a white building in front sunlight and look at that, that is just a little too white there. I, I, I wanna bring that whites down a little bit more. Now, if I come here to my top layer here, what I'm gonna do is you can see, this is where the input's right at the top. I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna do this mathematically. I'm bringing on negative 30, just to kind of bring it down. And you can see, I bring it back down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my layer that has the LUT on the creative part of it. I'll come back to basic correction. I'll talk my highlights here to negative 30. And you'll see that. And if you look here, look at the very clear, distinctive difference. You see how much more detail I'm getting there in the layer that has the LUT on the creative rather than the basic correction. And the reason why that's happening, if you look, is once I put this LUT on this layer, it's affecting everything underneath that. And that includes the highlights, but if I come down here and put it below it, you can see, if you look over here at my scopes, how much more detail I can get back in my highlights here, and I'm not getting that very close to blowing out white. I wanna see that detail in the building. I want it to be a little softer. I don't want it to be quite so contrasty. And literally, the only difference I made between these two clips is the order of where I put my LUT. 
So this is something that's very, very important. I think most of you don't realize how much you're affecting your image if you're putting your LUT on the very top layer of your basic control in Lumetri. Another thing that I really like about using the Creative tab for my LUTs is I can actually control the intensity as well. So what I can do is I can bring this down and really chill this out. And what's really nice about this, if you look at the basic correction, you don't have that same control over your LUT. Whereas in the creative tab, you do have that intensity control. And this is really good if you're going from another Lumetri layer where you're beyond the Rec. 709 and basic color correction, and you wanna start doing a grade with a more colored or stylized LUT, you can really dial down the intensity there, which gives you a lot more flexibility. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you haven't been using the Creative tab in Lumetri to do your color correction, especially on your LUTs, I think that's something you're gonna find yourself getting a ton more flexibility and a ton more punch and pulling out stuff from your image. If you're feeling limited on your images, this can be a way that can really give you so much more access to the information that your camera's getting and really make your color grades look that much better and that much more professional. Anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope you found this useful. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Please leave me any messages down below. Yeah, go out there, keep on shooting, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.